So the next segment in ITIL is service transition. This is the third area. And this is the point I made previously. If you thought about your strategy and you thought about your design, transition is actually all about managing the change towards that service, but it also encompasses some other disciplines you need to change the service when it's in life. And that's really important because if you don't know how it's gonna change once it's up and running, then things can go very badly wrong. And also from a ongoing support perspective, you, know, you wanna make sure you're changing things in a way that doesn't break anything. And that's the key benefit that ITIL tends to bring. If you formalize some of the ways, some of, the ways of change, then actually you can manage the uh, stability of a service uh, in the context of, of that change. Anyway, so service transition has got four key um, sub-disciplines, if you like. The first one is change management. Now, sounds very easy, but what this basically is, is formalizing the way you make changes. I'm gonna do a big UE so you can see these ferries behind me, Ari. I think that'd be quite a nice little touch. Um, so the change management is really formalizing the way you make changes to a given service. So if you think about, uh, I don't know, you want to add a new user. Now that's a bad example. If you add a new server, you probably need to understand what the impact of that, that uh, change is going to be. You need to understand why you're doing it, when you're doing it. You need to understand um, that it's not going to change anything else. And so in that context, that change management process is one that is really key. Now, from a procurement perspective, you need to make sure you understand this too, because that change will have a commercial impact. It could drive things like relief notices for a change that could um, impact the service. So understanding how that change management process works and how you engage with the supplier to manage change is a really critical part of any service that you're designing. And making sure that the procurement team understand that is also really critical. The second part, which is a bit more of a technical discipline, is release management. And this is really quite trying to understand, let me slow down a bit, trying to understand how you put new software in. So if you are changing a piece of software in the service, you need to understand really what is going on, uh, what the process is to make that change. And that covers major changes to software, or it just covers little patches for security purposes. But understanding how you test that change and, and implement that change and then backing that off to the supplier so everyone's really clear on who's responsible for what bits is absolutely critical and again something you should definitely put in your statement of work. The third sort of uh, transition phase is really very very important and no one gets this right either and that is uh, service asset and configuration management, SACM people call it or uh, lots of different phrases for it but basically it's making sure you keep a log of all of the components that form the service, all of the assets. Now, there are tools out there that can do this for you, um, but understanding who's responsible for tracking the assets in a given service, and by assets I mean technology devices, but also pieces of intellectual property, um, data centers, anything that's to do with delivering a service is an asset. And so those things need to be logged because Understanding who owns them, who should maintain them, where they're located, is all part of support of your change management process. And so that service asset and configuration management process is really key. And again, from a procurement perspective, it gives you clarity on things like IP ownership, asset ownership, but also makes it really clear from a service boundaries perspective who's doing what to which individual little widget within the component list. So you're really clear on, on what's happening. And the final, uh, uh, sub process if you like in transition is knowledge management and that knowledge management piece is really more about uh, understanding documentation and processes and if you know who's responsible for knowing what's going on with the service oh it's got a bit chewy out here now Harry, isn't it? Um, so that that's uh, that knowledge management process is key because if you want to move suppliers or if you want to update things, you need up-to-date documentation and knowledge. And also in the slightly bigger services, such as those that are outsourced, I'm just checking those ferries are coming. Um, that knowledge management piece is really key for things like Chupi, transfer of undertaking of personal employment, or the, or the, the transfer of staff between services. If you haven't got a clear knowledge management repository and you haven't got clear documentation, you are gonna struggle with moving a service from one place to another. So that's all within the transition framework. And basically the transition framework of ITIL, the service transition, is really managing change and, and making sure that you've got 
that change correctly governed will make your life a lot easier in the future. And that's why it's a very important part of ITIL. I'm gonna stop there because I'm just looking at the, the weather. Can you pan around on that, Harry? Look at that. We could have been over there. We've managed to chase the blue skies. That's insane. God, I don't really wanna, right, we're not going home for a bit, just so you know.